Yeah. Oh, there's a nice fish. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever it was, he grabbed it good. Well, there we go. How about that for a redfish? Oh, that's another good one. Oh, big trout. Whoa, baby. <laughs> Get out of there, get out of there, get out of there. Ooh, come on, buddy, get me out of the stuff. There we go. All right, there we go. There's a flounder. There's a flounder. All right, he's going in the box, you guys. Bang, how's that for a doormat? Oh, wow, as soon as I threw it, he got it. Right, so let's reach in here and grab out this nice little flounder. Now, this guy was not the biggest flounder in the world, by no means, but every flounder that's over 14, 15 inches or so, I keep just because I enjoy eating them. They're absolutely delicious. Let me turn around here and see if I can get to a little bit of light for you. Yeah, that's a little better. Okay, so how I fillet my flounder. Flounder, I like to I like to fillet into four pieces. So one, two, and on the verse, reverse side, three, four. So what I'll do is I will start right up here at the head. I'll feel where the skull and the head bone uh, meet and where that soft meat is. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of get an idea of how it's going to trace around. Come in here with my sharp silver sag knife and just kind of go right around the head just like that. Way. I don't waste any of this meat. So just come right down this lateral line. Um, there's a little bit of a, uh, a raise in the meat here and here and right here is your indention. This is the lateral line. This is exactly where you're going to come right down with your knife and slice. So I'd like to make a cut, keep the knife blade clean and sharp and come right down until I start hearing that backbone. Now you'll hear it. That is exactly where you want that, that cut to be. Now you just simply take your knife and you get on one side of that little uh, cut that you just made, angle it sideways, and you're just going to slowly work down and under the meat this way with your knife. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Just take your time, get a blade that's nice and flexible. This silver stag uh, bone and fillet knife is actually very flexible. And this is all I'm going to do. And just keep working just like that. Now, as far as the tail goes, don't pop all the way out because I'll show you how to flip that thing over and pull all this uh, skin off. But all I'm going to do is just keep working it. Once it gets to a point where I can lift it up, take a peek, I'll do that. But pop through these two little bones right here. And just keep working all the way like that. Now, once I get towards the end, I'll go ahead and pop the knife through. Get it to about right here. Come from this way. There we go. And... Last but not least, let's grab as much of this head meat as we can here. Like I said, it's not the biggest flounder in the world, but we are going to save every bit of the meat as we can. And that's it. So there is one quarter, make sure I'm seeing right, yep, one quarter off. So all I'll do is I'll just flap that little meat back, come right up here to the edge of his tail, and flip that over. Now as I flop that thing over, just like that, take my knife, Hold it nice and level. This is why, again, I bring my towel all the way to the very edge so it keeps everything from not sliding around. And I hold that knife nice and parallel. You can grab the meat and you just pull. And now you have a nice flounder filet. Now you haven't wasted hardly any meat here. This is all pretty much skin. And this is a really pretty filet. Now even though it's a small flounder, this is still a nice little chunk of meat, and I'm going to use this to actually make trout and flounder tacos. And so I'm going to do the same thing for this side. Flip it over, find that backbone, come down, turn, and just start working your way down. Now what you want to hear and listen for, if you guys can hear at home, is that clicking. That lets you know that you are on those ribs, or on, on, the, uh, on those bones, and you want to do that because you want no meat wasted. So you know if you have that knife held nice and flat, you too let me cut this out so I don't show a lot of blood and gut, just like that, you know that you're not wasting any meat. So pop through there, come through this side, pop through here, come on out, 
and same thing. Flap him over. I'm right-handed, so I like everything to go the same way. Bring him down and near. Okay, now the white side. This is the skinny side. It's going to fillet exactly the same, though. Come up here at the head. Come around and around. Find that lateral line. You can actually see the lateral line a little better here. Going all the way down. Come right down. Just down, turn, come under, just like that. And you just keep working. All right, let's grab this trout. I love to eat trout, absolutely love to eat trout. They're delicious, they're plentiful, they're everywhere. <laughs> they're easy to catch, they're not hard to target whatsoever, and I clean them exactly the same way I do every other fish. So start right here at the head, score all the way down the line just like that. Turn your knife over, this knife is very sharp. Come right down the back. Tick, 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 tick. That's all you need. Now trout, their scales are very soft. You don't have to worry about coming under like I did with the redfish. The reason I come under with that redfish is so I don't dull my knife. But trout, you just go right on top because they are uh, their, their scales are definitely a lot softer. So same thing, just stand that trout up, start to spread it open with your fingers like this, and then I work the knife right down. Now I know a lot of uh, people, guys and girls, both like to fillet their fish their own separate way, which is fine. I got no problem with that. This is just how I do it. I take my time. I'm not in a rush. I enjoy the catch, cleaning, the cook aspect of fishing. And this allows me to just kind of come out here and enjoy what I've caught and get back in tune with nature this way. So there's a nice uh, fillet here. Now all I'll do is I'll flip this guy over, clean my knife off, and same thing. Just start right here at the tail. And just nice and easy, try not to punch through that skin. Sometimes it's hard because you have a very sharp knife. There you go. Nice little flexible skin, done, out of the way. And this is a nice thick trout fillet. All right, guys, so I got the uh, trout and flounder filleted out in the bowl here. But what I've done is I've taken the uh, trout and flounder pieces and I've cut them into uh, slices and pieces big enough that'll actually fit into a uh, street taco size uh, shell. So all I'm going to do is just take my Everglades Season. This is their uh, fish and chicken. I grew up in Florida and absolutely love this stuff. It's got a really nice mild flavor. Uh, it's just kind of a, a, a seasoned salt. Everyone kind of makes their own. And I just really happen to like the one that Everglades does. Now once I got everything seasoned up in a bowl like this here, uh, the next step is a three step process. So in this bowl number one, uh, this is Zatarain's fish fry. Uh, it's just a basic uh, cornmeal based fish fry you can buy in any grocery store. This is just a couple of eggs uh, beat up and this is panko breadcrumbs. Now here's the deal. So you just take it and take a few pieces at a time and try to keep a wet hand and a dry hand. Right? So the dry hand is going to handle all of the dry and the wet hand will handle making sure everything that goes into a bowl that may get wet stays wet. That way you have a clean hand and a nasty hand uh, at the end when you're done. So just take that. Drop it in, get it nice and wet with the egg, shake it out, and just toss the breadcrumbs on just like that. And now this is all you got to do for all of your fish. Now we'll just go ahead and uh, knock out a couple pieces like this. So we'll just keep on doing what we're doing. This is my dry hand, this is my wet hand. It goes in. Everything gets covered up, just like that. Dry hand into the wet, wet hand grabs it. Everything gets nice and covered and coated. And that goes on the plate. Now I'll go ahead and finish up the rest of this, uh, but what you want to do is once you get everything nice and coated on a plate, 
you need to let it dry. So the biggest mistake that people make is they don't let the batter dry on the fish. If you don't let it dry, when you go to put it in the oil, the oil is going to, uh, when it cooks, it's going to make the batter separate from the fish and you're going to have that air pocket or that batter that kind of flakes off. So make sure you give it about four or five minutes to dry and kind of stick to it and then it'll be ready for the grease. Totally bond. Oh my God, put an angel on earth just for you. Just if we could rescue you from the depths of hell. And you wouldn't know what it's like to be her angel. Okay, and the last two steps of the uh, of the dish is the coleslaw. Now, this coleslaw is a vinegar based. I don't like to do a mayonnaise base because I'm going to do my crack sauce on it anyway, so I don't want too much mayonnaise. So the vinegar will bring a little bit of a, a citrus that it needs. It brings the acid that the dish is going to need. Uh, so all this is is angel hair uh, shredded cabbage that I get from Publix. Hit it with about a third cup of apple cider vinegar, uh, a couple tablespoons of olive oil, a little bit of good fresh local honey salt, pepper, mix it around, and it's good to go. Now let this thing set up for about 30 minutes or so. I've already uh, done this ahead of time. And what that uh, vinegar will do is it'll start to kind of break down the cabbage and make it really taste uh, nice. If you don't give it enough time for it to set, the cabbage will still taste kind of raw, and that's not the flavor profile you want. So go ahead and make this up ahead of time, throw it off to the side, and you're good to go. Now, the crack sauce. Um, everyone makes crack sauce a little bit different. I call it crack sauce, like I mentioned in my last video, because it's highly addictive, uh, but it's very simple ingredients. It's just sriracha chili paste. I throw in my Everglades fish and chicken season again. I use this season actually on almost everything. Vegetables, it's good for all kinds of stuff. Just a little Hel uh, Hellman's olive oil mayonnaise and a good local honey source. Now this is uh, Savannah Bee Company's honey. Um, I live in Savannah and I enjoy their honey and this is actually one that they get off of their farm not too far away from here so it gives me all the different, uh, the pollen, the enzymes, all the stuff that's good for uh, people that battle with sinus uh, issues and whatnot so I get this into my diet and, and it helps anytime I can get a chance. So very simple, I don't have any measurements for this, I just kind of eyeball it. I just come in here with the mayonnaise about like that, I would say that's probably maybe a cup, sriracha. Now you, you make this as hot or as, or as mild as you want it to be. My wife uh, doesn't like things too hot so I don't get too crazy. Come on top with a little bit of this uh, salt seasoning basically and then the honey. I like these little um, pump jars like this because it allows me to pump it in nice and easy without making a big mess. And I don't like to get too too sweet with it but sometimes I will give it just a little bit more than normal just to make that uh, flavor profile really kind of stand out. So you got sweet, creamy, you got spicy. Uh, this is a really, really good sauce. And you guys can use this on just about anything. Uh, if you got a little party with and you want to make little appetizers and you want to just whip up a last minute sauce, this is a really good one to do. Uh, so I like the color of that. Uh, obviously the uh, hotter it gets, the more red it'll be. So you're just gonna have to play around with the, uh, the heat and the sweet uh, profile of this to get it exactly the way you want it. But that looks about right. So last thing we got to do is just head on out to the fryer. I'm going to deep fry this uh, this fish. I got a nice cast iron skillet on my uh, little immersion cooker outside because I don't want to stick up the house with fish. And then uh, once that's done, we'll put it all together and I'll let you meet the kids. So, let's go outside.
<laughs> Louder, trout, tacos. We got Leilani over here eating the fish. This is my uh, my daughter, Leilani. She's a little over a year and a half old. This is Lincoln. This was the reason that I've been down and out on the uh, the fishing lately as, as much as I normally like to fish. I stay home, help mom out. This is my wife, Elizabeth. And this is our beautiful little family. So, you want to say a prayer? Lord, I thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for everything you've given me uh, with YouTube. Lord, I thank you for my uh, positive subscribers. Lord, I thank you for the help that you've given me and my family. Lord, bless this food to our bodies. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys. Well, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. I just wanted to give you guys a nice little glimpse into uh, my personal life. Uh, this recipe is killer if you're looking for a good fish taco recipe uh, with a crunchy, super crunchy uh, fish. This is the one to do. So I thank you for all the support that you give me and my channel. Um, that's going to be it. Take care, you guys. God bless.